What about the different forms of berberine that are in supplements? So there's regular berberine that you get from nature, and I don't think you're going to see that in supplements. It's just not used very much because the absorption, the bioavailability is a less than 1%. So you're not going to see that too much in supplements. To get around that, supplement companies make different forms of this stuff. So there is berberine HCL, which I think is probably the most common form out there. It's much more stable than regular berberine, so it'll last longer in a supplement bottle. However, its absorption is still pretty low. It's about 1% absorption. So if you took 100 milligrams, you'd only absorb about 1% of that. And to get around that low absorption, supplement companies sometimes pack it with a lot of berberine, maybe 1,000 or 1,500 milligrams. Again, you'd still absorb only about 1% of that. Another form out there is called berberine phytosome. And this is essentially the berberine molecule wrapped in fat. It does have a higher absorption. It's about four to 5%. And because it has higher absorption, it may actually come in lower doses. So you may only see a 500 milligram of berberine phytosome compared to 1500 milligram of berberine HCL. Again, you'll absorb about four to 5% of the berberine phytosome. And then there's also dihydroberberine, which some people like to call super berberine because its bioavailability is about 5%. The downside of dihydroberberine is I don't see a lot of human clinical trials on it yet, and so I don't necessarily think it's worth the added price, but there you go. There's, there's what you need to know about berberine.